Hey everyone, welcome to another uh, video. We're going to be covering today how to do async in MobX. This was a question posed to me by uh, someone on my other uh, Intro to MobX videos, and it was basically how do you do async in MobX? So that's what we're going to cover, and to be honest, I was doing it wrong before I started researching into this. It's pretty easy to do, but um, there's a few little tricks to know. If you've ever done uh, Redux before, you've you had to use thunk and it's it's a bit of a process so today we're going to see how MobX handles that same sort of thing. So if we look at our app, what we're doing here is just simply showing some JSON that we've fetched from a from an endpoint. Let's take a look at the code. So here we have our app component and what we're doing is when the component did mount, we are going to our store and we're telling it to load weather for Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And then down here, we're uh, JSON prettying just to make it look nice uh, what weather data is loaded when we load it. If you'll notice, uh, if you've seen other videos or have done MobX before, normally you do inject up here with um, decorators. So you'd inject the weather store and then you'd say that this is an observer so that it updates when, when changes are made to the data in the store. In this video, I'm going to try and do it without any sort of decorators because we're actually using MobX4. And in MobX4, there's some new functionality to make it really easy to decorate your different functions, your actions, your computes and whatnot without needing the Babel support for decorators. So that's why down here, we're injecting the weather store and that, return, that returns us a function that we can then call and we can pass the observer function in our app component. So we end up in the same place, but we don't need to sort of either eject from uh, create react app or use the, the different things like the abilities um, to add in different uh, Babel plugins without injecting and whatnot. It's a bit of an easier way. And it's not that much more work to do it this way than adding decorators up here. So let's get started. Component did mount, we call the load weather function. So we come into our store and we've got our class here like normal. And let me just point out here is where you'd normally sort of have weather data is an observable property and load weather is an action like that. You'll notice I don't have that because in MobX4, there's this new decorate function that it comes with. So you can pass it your store and then an object, and then you pass all of your different uh, properties or your properties or your actions or whatnot here, and it sort of decorates it all after the fact. Um, if we just go into the version quickly. So I'm actually using uh, a beta two. By the time this video comes out or whenever you see it, it might be four is launched by now, but I don't think the API will be changing at all. So uh, you'll notice I'm not ejected at all. This is just standard create react app. So let's say we want to make my load weather function an action. You would just say load weather is going to be an action like that. So if we look in here, load weather, it takes a city, which is the Toronto, Ontario, and then we use fetch to go hit this uh, little demo API I have set up and we pass the city. When we get a response, we'll convert it to JSON. And then after we've got that data, we'll simply put it, we'll set it the weather data, which is our observable property here, to be what comes back from the API. So if we refresh the page, it loads pretty quickly and we have our weather being displayed here. Now you may think everything's fine, but we have one issue. And the issue is that when you use actions in MobX, what you're really supposed to do is anytime you're changing your observable data, it's supposed to be done directly in the function, the action function. But you, what you'll notice here is that we're actually changing our observable data, not in the action function itself, but in the then promise callback sort of thing that happens here. So the data is being updated, you could say outside of this action directly. And in MobX, uh, Three, there was something you could do. Um, I forget what it was called, actually. I'll link it in the notes. Oh, here we go. 
So in MobX3, you would use this function use strict two, and it would sort of monitor things for you so that uh, if you did update data outside of an action, it would give you a big error. In MobX4, you use this new configure function. So I've imported it here, and we're going to call it, and we're going to tell it to enforce our actions for us. And what this will do in a sec, you'll see. All right, so we've essentially turned strict mode on. And it's telling us that uh, changing an observed observable values outside of actions is not allowed. Please wrap the code in an action. So you'll notice here, well, this is an action. We've, we've said here it's an action, but it's giving us an error. And that's, as I mentioned before, it's because it's actually being done in this callback function here uh, when the promise is resolved rather than in the action directly. So what we can do to fix this is we can just simply create a new uh, action here called set weather, which will take our data and it will say that the weather data is equal to the data. So instead of setting it directly here, we can call set weather and pass our data to it. So what we have done is we're changing the data here now, not in load weather. So this doesn't really need to be an action because nothing is being changed in it. What we need is to make set weather our action. So we do that, and now things are loading fine without any sort of errors at all. And same sort of thing, like if you had this wrapped in a try catch so that you could catch any errors that might come back from the API, your catch code should also be um, inside of uh, probably a separate function that would be like handle set handle uh, fetch weather error or something like that but uh, no error handling in this demo all right so we solved it one way by simply moving where we're setting the data into its own little function which we're going to make an action we're going to look at two other ways you can do this so we are going to basically copy this and we're going to call this uh, load weather uh, inline. And we will want to make it, ah, you know what, we don't even need to make it an action. So load weather inline. And what we want to do is, really what we want to do is when we get the data back, we want to do it, set the value right here, but we can't because it's not being done directly in the action. So what you can do is you can import this function called run in action. And it sort of allows you to create a little inline action anywhere inside of your functions. So you can say run in action here, and you pass it an arrow function. And then inside of this little arrow function, it's going to be run inside of an action. So we can say uh, this dot weather data equals data. And we'll switch up our function out in the app to use that one instead. So we refresh and it's all working correctly, no errors. So the first approach is to sort of move your setting of the observable data outside of um, call a function which does the setting directly rather than doing it in this callback up here. Second approach is to use the run in action function to allow you to inline action code that would otherwise give you a strict violation. So how can you do this instead of doing the then, the then, but switching it to an async await? I'll show you that here. We'll call this load weather async. All right, so what we get back first is our response. So we'll say const response equals await that. That allows us to get rid of that call. And then we'll say const data equals um, await response.json. So now we've got our data, so that allows us to get rid of this code here. But then we still need to run it inside of an action here in line like this. And the reason is because even though it sort of reads sort of one thing, then this, then this, and it doesn't look like there's any callbacks happening, what async await is doing in the background is it's basically switching it to run code that's like this, but it allows us to write it in a nicer way without needing the dot thens everywhere. 
so we still need our run in action. So we'll just make sure it works by calling our load weather async function instead. And it works fine without any errors. Let me just double check that I'm not. All right, we're good so far. So these are essentially the same thing. It's just switching it to use async await instead of uh, the, the dot then uh, promise resolution. So let's take a look at a third way now. And a third way is to use this new functionality called flow. And we're going to be using flow along with generators and yield, which is a little bit new to me, but we'll walk through it. Flow in version 3 of MobX didn't actually come from the core of MobX package. It came from this package called MobX Utils, and it used to be called async action. So if you're in MobX 3, you're going to import async action from MobX Utils. If you're in MobX 4, you're going to import flow from the core MobX package. All right, so we're going to call this load weather generator version. And you, from what I've found, it's you can't really use uh, this arrow function approach with generators. You're going to have to switch back to the, the old function approach. So our function takes a city. And we'll just copy this one because it's the most similar. Down into here. And then we'll, we need to, once we get our data, we can set the weather like this. All right, so we're missing two things. Uh, if we wanted async await, you'd have to say async here, but we're actually not going to be doing that. We're going to be converting it into a generator function. And you do that by adding this star here. And now that it's a generator function, we're actually going to be yielding instead of awaiting the data. So what a generator does, it essentially makes your function iterable. So it can, whoever's calling this function can basically loop over and every time it receives a yield, that basically yields control back to the calling function and it can do what it wants. Um, so we're yielding here back to whoever's calling this function. And by doing that, it allows us to use this new flow function which we're going to decorate down here. So we're going to say load weather generator, and that's going to be decorated by the flow function. So what's calling this function here is going to be the flow, because that is the thing that's wrapping this function here. And what flow will do is every time we yield control to our parent, the, the caller, in this case flow, it's essentially going to do this sort of thing. It's going to wrap the code that is run in it like a run in action and then that will allow us to to have this code that sort of reads more a little bit more like async await but we don't have to have this run in action every time we want to modify our observable data so if this works we can call our load weather generator which again is a function that is a generator Every time you, you have asynchronous code, so every time you would do a wait, you're going to use yield instead. And that allows the flow function, which is decorating this one, to take control for a second and basically wrap your code in, in action so that it all works correctly, even in strict mode. So we're going to call our load weather generator function. And it again works without any errors. Great. Okay, so just to, uh, oh, I should mention there is one other approach. Let me just mob x async. If I go to the actual documentation into writing asynchronous actions, so they sort of cover why you can't do it, and they show the different approaches that I covered as well. So run an action, which we did. Uh, run an action with async await. So if you want to do the async await approach and you don't want to use this generators approach below, but you find it really annoying every time you have you want to have your code run in an action using this run in action function, 
There's a Babel plugin you can use called Babel plugin MobX Deep Action. And it essentially allows you to write code that looks just like async await. So like this code here, without needing to wrap things and run an action, the Babel plugin does that for you. But I chose not to use that here because I wanted to use a straight up create react app where I haven't ejected or done anything with the Babel packages. This is as sort of vanilla as you can come. And if I wanted to add this Babel plugin, I'd have to either eject or use another approach of being able to modify the Webpack Babel plugins without ejecting. So I think this is a little bit, it's a good compromise, these approaches here. And just to uh, go over them again, we've got our weather store. And here we've got our, our most basic load weather function. And instead of setting our data right here, we simply call another function with the data and it can set the observable property. And the reason this works again is because we have uh, decorated that function, sorry, right here, as an action. Our second approach was to convert this and to do it inline, but to do that inline without, um, with having our code run correctly in an action, we had to use this run in action function. So it adds a little bit more boilerplate, but it allows us to have one single function instead of two. Here we use the same approach, but we used async await instead of the normal dot then dot then with uh, fetch. So we awaited our response, we converted the response to JSON. Now we've got our data. So to set our data into the observable property, we need to wrap that in a run in action. La the last approach was the generator approach where we used a generator function instead. And every time there would have been a wait, we yield and we're yielding control to the, the calling function, which in this case is flow because we've decorated this load weather generator with the flow decorator down here. And that allows us to run everything correctly inside of strict mode, which in MobX4 you use the configure function for and you tell it that you want to enforce your actions. And I would always recommend having this on by default because it will help you write MobX code uh, more correctly, where everything, every time you're modifying observable data, it is only done within an action. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you're interested, uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel because I'm going to be trying to put out videos on React, MobX, and sort of all sorts of related topics, uh, hopefully once a week. All right. Have a good day, everyone. Take care. Bye.